right. Good morning, class. Hope we're having a good morning so far. Um, so let's see what we have going on. Oh yeah, so I do have the uh, auto testing now uh, all sort of done for assignment uh, seven. So we have I have three different auto tests set up. The first one is a basic just uh, testing uh, your input and output your program. So on the PDF, the output that it shows on that is the same output, same same um, input file I'm using in the auto test. So no real surprise there. No, it's all transparent. So I'm doing just the same input files that's used in the uh, PDF. The other two um, sort of input test cases are um, one is just a test to see if the resize function is working correctly. So I'm actually inserting um, I don't know around. 80 ish um, sort of characters into your hash map. So it's going to force a resize to happen. So it'll test that out. And then the last one tests out your copy constructor and your assignment operator to make sure it does perform a deep copy of your structure. So that's all. And those two are worth uh, temper or actually one point on the uh, on the uh, rubrics. I think the 14 point rubric, I believe, for this one. So those are each worth one point out of 14 and three points. Uh, for the auto testing, uh, five for just quality of code, two for documentations, and then one for memory leaks and so and such. So that's kind of the uh, Ruby. You can also check it out on uh, CodeGrade as well. So that's how it's going to work. So all right then. So let's go ahead and just uh, go back to our class notes from last time. So let's start a screen share. All right. So last time I talked about um, how to construct um, a binary heap uh, given an array. So obviously there was two ways we can do it. So the first obvious way was well, we allocate another array, and we just one by one insert elements into this heap array. So consider this array given to you right here. This is not in max heap order. So for this one, I'm using max heaps. Although this could be also applied on a mini heap, but I just chose max heap just to be different, I guess, on this example. So I could go ahead and create another array, a separate array, and then go ahead and insert five into that array, insert three, insert two, insert eight, seven, four, 12, nine, and 10 in that order, and just you know, insert each element one by one and then bubble it up potentially. And that would go ahead and that would obviously would create a uh, min or in this case, a max heap. That approach would be n long again because you're going to be doing essentially n insertions, and then each insertion is going to be logarithmic in runtime, so n times log of n. Or you can think of it as you have so far initially zero elements in your heap, so one step plus log of one plus log two plus log three plus log four as you're increasing the size of that heap, which that amount, if you take the integral of that, it will be n log again runtime, so that's n log n operation. So now we just we um, consider this other approach known as a build heap operation where we sort of bubble down from the leaves. This is sort of our lazy approach. And I mentioned last time laziness could actually give you a better runtime. So given this uh, heap, I would sort of bubble uh, down from the leaves. So what I would do essentially is starting from uh, node uh, 10 bubble down index eight, bubble down, index seven, bubble down, index six, bubble down, so forth. That's what I was doing. So I should have drawn it on this array. I used only the tree, but essentially that's what I did. So after using this sort of example, we are able to get a max heap. So therefore build heap works because we test out the one input case and with this one input case, it worked. Therefore, you know, we can, we can e easily prove that it always works every single case, right? That's how proofs work. I mean, that'll be, that's kind of cool, right? Just test for one input case, it works for that. Then obviously it has to work for every single scenario. Well, you actually can prove inductively that um, the whole idea is you first start with your bottom most level, your leaves are in heap order. If you bubble down from a level above, then you constantly create one more level that's gonna be in heap order. And using this sort of inductive sort of step, you can show that it will eventually will uh, build the entire heap. So this method does work, you can prove it, but what, what does not prove that, but just sort of believe me for right now, this will in fact always create a max heap. So one question is that um, if let's say we have a max heap, 
here's a question. Um, does having an array in min or max keep order imply a sorted array? Now this could be sorted in descending order or ascending order. So does this actually imply that? So if you have an array in max or min heap order, does that imply sorted descending or ascending order? And I guess right there is your proof looking at it. The answer is no, because look right here, we have uh, an array, we had this original array right there. You put it into max heap order and it's not sorted in descending or ascending order. So the answer for this is no. So, I mean, if, there, if it was the case, if let's say it did imply that, then this would be kind of an issue because this runtime is relatively quick. So I'll go over, I'll, I'll come back to this in a second, but let's go ahead and go over the runtime analysis uh, for uh, build heap. So let's go ahead and just um, draw an example tree, just so we can kind of um, get an idea of, we want to count how many steps this is going to actually do. I'm going to um, just draw an example uh, sort of heap right here. Let me space my little, for, let me space it out a little. Yeah, let's go with that. We're going to do one more level. So this is not going to have any values in it. This is, this is considered this um, array or this um, sort of this um, tree, which is going to emulate some array. So let's say we're given an array that can go ahead and visualize the array in this type of uh, tree type of form. Okay, so I want to count how many steps we're going to run here with, with this, with this uh, bubbling down from the leaves downward. So at this bottom most level, so how many, so we have a height of age, and this, this tree has a height age basically. So it's going to be a height age. Okay, so the bottom most level is going to have two up to the H amount of nodes, right? That's how many nodes we have at the bottom level and leaf level. And each of these do no work because you can't bubble down from the leaf level because, well, there's no children to bubble down with. So those two to the H elements, without doing any work at all, are going to be in heap order. So there's our laziness right there. We just did nothing. We did nothing at all to get all those nodes in heap order. Pretty cool. So if you go one level up, we're going to have two to the age minus one nodes. And each of these does one amount of work, right? Because um, there's only one level above, so it only has to bubble down with one of its children, and that's it. So that's all it's going to do. Level above that, is going to do two amount of work. Each of those two nodes do two work. In the very bottom, very topmost level, so I just have two to the power zero. So the root level has one node only. That's going to do eight amount of work. So the idea here is as we go one level above, using this build heap approach, where we bubble down from a level from a node, what happens is every time we go up one level, we do more work but it's going to be half as many nodes each time. So when we, have, when we have a lot of nodes, a lot of nodes do not much work. And then we have a few nodes doing a lot of work. So not many nodes do nothing and a few nodes do a lot. It's kind of like having a group project where 
most of the team doesn't do anything at all and one person does all the work it's kind of like that sort of that's be a terrible example to use but we'll go ahead and go with that for right now which is that's a very bad example but i guess it's a thing like that if you average it out among all the all the group members then everyone did not much work at the end of the day so all right so let's go ahead now and just continue with this and uh, let's go over how to count um number of steps so i'm going to put a summation here which is going to model this um sort of work perfectly let's go ahead and do that right now so we're going to put a summation and we're going to have um, i equals zero up to h two up to the power h over two to the power i multiply it by i it's going to be all in one summation so this model is this exactly because what happens is we always divide in half. So we have two to each number of nodes initially. If we go up one level, of course, we're subtracting the exponent by one. But I mean, if I were to do this, I mean, it's the same thing as doing this. If I say two to the h minus one, the same thing as two up to the power h over two to the power one, same idea. Or two to the power h minus two, the same thing as saying two to the power h over two squared. So same idea. So we just, I just have it drawn up differently, but same concept. So we're, all we're doing is when we go up one level, we're going to do, we're going to have half as many nodes and we do one more amount of work. So this um, sort of summation model is this work perfectly. So we have our summation. Let's go ahead now and try to solve this, this summation. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to do a little bit of algebra and sort of take this 2 to the power h and remove it or take it out of the summation because this is sort of going to be a constant in a sense because this is not going to really depend on i really. So it's going to kind of remain fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of pull this out of the summation. Getting this. Which can be rewritten in this type of form. I multiplied by power i. It can be redrawn like this. So that's the kind of form I'm getting. So the whole idea of getting this form is because there's actual, um, you can solve this summation. There is actually, this is actually a kind of a modified geometric series. So the following um, summation models this perfectly. So we have i equals zero to infinity. We have, um, C multiplied to the power I multiplied by I, where, where C is less than one, this summation is going to sort of convert to the following answer. It's going to be C over one minus C squared is what this is going to um, result to. So there's actual formula that can work this um, instance of a summation now. So we have exactly that. We have, in this case, C will be one half in this case. So we can go ahead and apply this formula onto this summation. End up getting two to the power H, multiply it by, I'll just put some brackets here. We end up getting one half over one minus one half squared. So that right there in that bracket, it's going to end up giving us the value of two. If we sort of work the, um, the math out, it's going to give us two. So we're going to have, so essentially the idea is that um, if H was a very big number, then this is going to converge to this amount. So I'm using infinity over here. H is not infinity, but the idea is that we're sort of setting this to infinity right now, which means that this summation cannot go beyond this number two. So if h is very big, it's going to converge to the value 2. No matter how big h is going to get, it can never exceed the value 2. So you're going to sort of uh, maximize this and say, okay, fine, we'll assume that h will be so large that it's going to be very, very close to 2. So we'll just assume it's going to be 2 for right now, just, to, just for the heck of it. So this will be 2 to the power h, multiply it by 2, which gives us 2 up to the power h plus 1. And then what is this going to be? I mean, what what is this number? I mean, this is actually very close to n. 
remember if you have a binary tree that's balanced for for a min or max heap it'll always be a balanced binary tree so if you have high this h there's actually two to the h plus one minus one number of um nodes this amount is actually very similar to n which means that this build heap takes o of n time That's going to be the runtime for build heap. Which means that if we're given an array at once, so obviously, if let's say we're not given an entire array, we're given elements one by one, you have no choice but to do insertions every single time like that. But if you're given an entire array at one time, you want to construct a, min a binary min or max heap out of it, it will take you O of n time to construct this, which is better than O of n log n. So the lazy approach wins. So you can get a better runtime uh, for a heap using a build heap approach. So let's go back to the um, question I sort of posted a second ago. It does this uh, imply a min or so having a min or max heap, does that imply a sorted array? The answer is no. If it was yes, that means we just found a way to sort an array in O of n time in the worst case, which we proved earlier that this cannot possibly exist. We proved that for a, any comparison-based sorting algorithm, it can never be better than O of n log n in the worst case, which means that this would violate that proof. This is already against that proof. But then again, you don't have to worry about that because I just showed an example where, yeah, here's my max heap, it's not sorted. So there we go, I proved it. So to disprove something is very simple. To show one example where it doesn't work, disproved. To prove something though is always harder because you have to show for every case it'll work. Because having one input case does not prove it's gonna always work. Whereas this proving is much easier. So I can disprove this very simply by showing an example. There, this are my max heap, now sorted order, done. Mic drop, I can go ahead and say it's proven, done, easy. So there we are. So O of n time using this build heap approach, we can actually construct um, a binary um, min or max heap. So let's go ahead now and um, go over one more sort of um, algorithm involving heaps. So I wanna go over uh, heap sort, which is now we can finally can um, do heap sort because we've, got, we've gone over the basics of how heaps work. We went over how insertion works, how deletion works, how to build a heap. So now we can go ahead and begin heap sort. So I'm going to, um, begin a new um, sort of page and just um, call this uh, heap sort. Just like that. Two lines over here as always. And all right, so let's go over the actual steps for heap sort. So what we first do is for heap sort, of course, we're given an array. So we have to first um, construct, so I guess, you know, here's the idea. So we have to construct a um, min max heap uh, from the given array. Now, um, if you want ascending order, so um, so if you want the list ascending order or sorted, sorry, want the list sorted in ascending order. Use a max heap if you want a list sorted in descending order. Use 
Så det er mængde i. So we're going to um, basically use um, a max heap because we're going to go over how to sort the list in ascending order. So we'll use a max heap to do this. So a heap sort is really just going to be um, an improved version. Heap sort. Is, is an improved version of selection sort, which we haven't really talked about selection sort in this class, but you did, of course, um, for your first assignment, you know, you did actually um, sort of implement selection sort using a doubly linked list, which that was definitely, I mean, that was a long time ago. So you can imagine like how terrible start this class was, but since then this class has gotten not better really. But you can imagine you can imagine what that was in that first week. So that was way back in August. So it's pretty interesting how time just kind of flies when you're having fun. So anyway, oh, good. Yeah, you have some agreement. That's good. So um anyway. So basically, um, cause such and sort of how it worked. It just, we just took, we found a max element in our list and then we insert it to the back. And then we try to find the max of that list without that last element, just find that the max in that smaller list, find the max of that and put that to the second to last position and so on and so forth. That was such and sort of. Well, heaps sort of the same thing, except that it will find the max element faster than linear time. Because remember, um, the heap always maintains for a max heap the root element will have the biggest element. So we can, in very much faster time, always find a max element. So that's the whole idea of heap sort. Let's go ahead and uh, go over the pseudocode for heap sort. So, well, we're gonna first, um, I guess, um, sort of use build heap to um, construct a, and so we'll say max heap, but we're gonna go ahead and be specific right now. What are you gonna do? We're gonna sort in ascending order, so we'll, we'll be specific to max heaps over here. So of course, you could, instead of using a build heap, you could of course just, you know, insert to another structure using, um, you know, doing n insertions. You can do that to create the heap, but, I guess, you know, the question is why? Why not just use build heap instead? Although build heap is not going to improve the overall runtime for heap sort, but it's still going to give it a better runtime and it also does not waste more memory because for uh, using it to, so to construct a heap using a separate array, it involves first allocating another array of size n and takes more time to construct it, whereas a build heap takes O of n time and you do not have to um, allocate another array to a heap, to a, to a separate heap structure. So a build heap is just a better idea to use for this, even though it's not going to improve the runtime overall. But you know why? You know why do it slower for build heaps? Just use build heap instead of using that n log n time to construct your heap. So first, use a build heap to construct a max heap. Then for step two, actually, well, yeah, step two is going to be first. You want to uh, remove the max element store it into a variable um, the variable max. So we'll have a variable called max, I, I guess. And we'll just go ahead and store this into a max variable. And then what's going to happen is we do a removal. It's going to basically just, well, it takes the last element in a heap, bubbles it down. So it's going to now put the next max element at the very top, the very first element. So then we, all we have to do now is we're going to have to just assign a max to, um, so into element size plus one. In other words, um, assign max to the element um, right after where the heap ends. 
I'll do an example, of course, which will make more sense. So then we basically just do this. Sort of put this, no, I can't really fit this here. So I'll just put this down here. So we're going to um, uh, perform this n times. So step two and three, we just sort of have a loop that keeps doing this. So we do this uh, while, so we went to other words, we can say while the heap is not empty. So we're going to go ahead and sort of pop an element off the heap one by one and put it to the end. So you can kind of already can sort of see the runtime of what it will be for heap storage. It's this, this is going to be the dominant term. It just takes all of n time to build this heap, but this work is going to take more than all of n time. So it's going to be all of n log n no matter what we do, whether we do a build heap or whether we use that n log n time to construct our heap. But either way, though, why do it slower? Why build a heap slower? We can do it faster, right? So I guess it makes sense to still just still build a heap in faster time. But then either way, though, dominant term is going to be this steps two and three back and forth will take more time overall <clears throat> to um, construct or to um, construct a sorted list. So let's go ahead and do an example of heap sort on an actual array to make, make more sense of what's going on. But this is the pseudocode for this. It's not a very complicated algorithm to actually uh, visualize. That's an example. Shouldn't be too hard to work this one out. Definitely easier than quick sort in my opinion, so this should not be too bad. Let's go ahead and first just construct or just let's give an array over here. Okay, so we'll have the array like this. And I'll put the um, array indices below. So we're given this array. I want to sort it. I mean, I may not show every single step. We'll see how far I get. Um, let's go ahead and just, you know, I think I have about 45 minutes, so it should be enough time to at least get a good amount of work done with this. Let's go ahead and sort this array. So I'm going to have um, about 15, uh, 12, 3, 5, 7, 11, 2, um, let's see, uh, four, I'll say 10, then I'll say, uh, let's see, I'll try seven. I already have seven. Okay, let's try one. Okay, good enough. So clearly this array is not sorted, not in ascending or descending order. So I want to, I want to sort this in ascending order, but we have to first, um, take this array and do a build heap on this. So let's go ahead and draw the tree below just so we can visualize how this array would look in that tree type form. We're going to just put the tree over here. Um, then we're gonna have uh, 12, three, five, seven, 11, two, four, 10, and one. Go ahead and just first perform a uh, build heap on this. All right. So I'll stick mostly, I'm going to mostly work uh, from this uh, tree instead and just kind of preserve the array. So that way it's easier to um, follow along because I'm going to go ahead and show you what you want to show for the exam question regarding heap sorts. So I'm going to go ahead and just mostly work through the tree and not really mess with the array too much just to make it more cleaner. So for build heap, of course, at the leaf level, everything's in sorted order. So I don't have to do anything at all, or not sort order, in heap order. 
So all these nodes are going to be in heap order already, each of these, right? So I don't have to do any work, really. So I can go ahead and skip right to um, this node right there. So we want to have a max heap. So seven is bigger than one, so we're okay. Then at this element right there for five is not in max heap order. So I'm going to bubble the five down over there. Ten moves up. Then we have to now work from this node. So it's not in max heap order. We're going to bubble three down with the 11. And then, then we have to go ahead and look at the next node above. So 12. 12 is bigger than both children. So we are in max heap order. So we're good. And then 15 is also in max heap order. So that was actually very simple to do build heap on this example. Ended up being a very simple instance of build heap because I guess uh, 12 was bigger than 10 and 7. 11, 11 is okay. 15 is bigger than both 12 and 11. So uh, no need to be done. We don't have to bubble down any further. So, okay. So I guess we got lucky there. So an example from up uh, from before, it required more work to do build heap, but this one required less work. So, oh, well, so now our array looks like this. Let me go ahead and actually copy this. So I'll have to redraw this entire structure. So here's going to be our current array after we're done. To erase all this and recopy it, so I can copy the array every single time. So it would be easier to do this example faster. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put a few things over here as well. I want to say for now, I want to say uh, capacity. I'll just say capacity is going to be 10. And size also will be 10 for this heap. Go ahead and just sort of copy this whole entire thing again. So I'm going to read it every single time. Here's going to be our array in max heap order uh, 15, 12, 11, 10, 7, 3, 2, 4, 5, and 1. This is going to be the array after build heap. So for an exam involving um, heaps, so what's going to happen is I'm going to have several uh, kind of text boxes to fill in, so to fill in the array. So I'm going to have a text box, I'm going to have index 1 equals, index 2 equals, and so forth. You have to go ahead and put in 15, 12, 11, 10, 7, in that order, into that question. So it's going to be an automated question on the exam. So yeah, the first, give me the um, array after um, build heaps. So it's going to be your step zero, essentially, is going to be this. Let's first get this into heap order. So give me the array in heap order. And now what's going to happen is we're going to have to go ahead and now run our um, actual heap sort algorithm. So I'm going to now to just basically uh, draw the uh, tree right below. 15, 12, 11, 10, 7, 3, 2, 4, 5, and 1. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll put circles in just to, nah, that, that takes too long. I'm going to go ahead and just not put circles because it takes too long, for example. I want to kind of not spend too much time on this. So I'll, just, I'll draw the tree like in this type of form. So it's kind of a, kind of more of a, not a very nice looking tree, but we'll go with that. So. Once we have our original array in heap order, we first do our first step for um, build, uh, heap sort. So if both children of a node are larger than the parent, which node do we choose to swap in a max heap? We pick the bigger child to swap with if both children are bigger than the parent. So bin heap, you pick the smaller one, max heap, you pick the bigger one, and you swap with that bigger one. So um, now let's go ahead and just first get our max. Yep, no problem. Let's first get our uh, max elements. So for a heap operation, 
there's actually going to be a function called um, get max. So this would be very simple. It returns element 15. So that's going to be the max element in this heap. So we go ahead and retrieve the max. We store it into a variable. And then we're going to go ahead and call delete max. What that does, as always, the very end element in our heap, so element index 10 or 1, we're going to go ahead and take this element, or actually, let me go ahead and put this around. Oops. It's going to be a center removed from our heap. And we're going to overwrite the root width 1 and then bubble down this 1, as always, our standard uh, delete operation. So we pick the bigger child between 12, between uh, for, for node 1 is 2 children, the bigger child is 12, so we're going to bubble down with the bigger child. So 1 goes over here, 12 goes up. We continue with this process, so 1 has 2 children, 10 and 7. We're going to bubble down with the bigger child, and goes up. And then we're going to, again, bubble down further, so we have 2 children for 1, 5 and 4, 5 is the bigger child, so we bubble down with the bigger one. One goes over there, five goes up. This is going to be our new um, sort of array, our new uh, heap. Let's go ahead now and just um, write out the array after we do this um, um, delete max. So, of course, I could have messed with the array instead and show this, how the array would bubble down. But I want to preserve these arrays because it will make it much easier for, um, for understanding how the exam question would have to go for this. So, I just want to just have it in that kind of form easier to follow, like easier to just, you know, for exam purposes, because you're going to have to actually give me the array after every single step. So size now is going to be um, nine. We are size from now on. And our array looks like this. We're going to have 12, uh, 10, 11, 5, 7, 3, 2, uh, for one. And what I'll do right now for index 10, so element right after, so size contains nine. So element right after size, so size plus one. So 10, I'm going to insert the max element for my earlier step, which had the value 15 earlier. So I'm going to insert that to index 10. So basically, right, in, right here, from indices one through nine, that's my heap, Everything beyond nine is going to be my sorted array or my kind of my progressively sorting array. So whatever is in white is going to be my heap. Whatever is in blue is going to be a sorted array. That's the whole idea for heap sorts. So we can see here the max element was put to the very end. So it's going to be so for an exam question, you have to first give me this array for step zero. Step one, you're going to have to give me this array. So let's continue because we have to have the whole list sorted. Let's continue with this. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to just draw the uh, tree below. So this is to help us visualize this, um, this whole entire um, heap sort, uh, this whole heap structure, I should say. Seven, two, three, four, five, So once again, let's go ahead and get our max element. So I'm going to just have max will be assigned to this heaps uh, get max. So get max returns essentially the element at index one, because index one, the root will be the max element for a max heap. So our max variable is going to contain the value 12. Then we're going to call delete max, which is going to, of course, take the max, the very end element, which is going to be one, overwrite the root with it, and decrement um, size by one. I'll show that size value decremented in the next step. So you have to, of course, bubble down this element one. So you have two children, 10 and 11. The bigger child is 11. Bubble down with the bigger child. So one goes there, 11 goes up. And once again, you bubble down further. So the bigger child will be three. Bubble down with that bigger child. So one goes there, three goes there. And that's going to be our new updated uh, max heap. Let's go ahead and sort of draw the um, array after step two, or at, at step two.
So we're going to have, um, we're going to go ahead and paste this here. Awesome. So I'll write the, um, the array out. So the array looks like this after we do that, delete max. We'll have um, 11, 10, 3, 5, 7, 1, 2, wait, hold on. 11, 10, 3, 5, 7, 1, 2, 4. Okay, perfect. And 15 is still right there. And right now our size is going to now be eight because remember we call delete max, which is going to decrement size by one. So we're going to now insert the last max. So right here in the previous step, we had max contain 12. We're going to write that to position size plus one or eight plus one. We're going to write 12 over here. So we can see we're kind of progressively getting a sorted list. We're not quite there, but we can see that our sorted set, those blue numbers, we're, we're, we have more of them than we had before. So we're progressively getting there. We're not quite sorted, but we are getting one step closer. I'll draw the, um, the array out over here, or not the tree out over here, sorry. Just so we can use this tree to help us visualize the steps. So for the exam, you want to give me this array. So for the exam, here's what you would do. First, give me this, the first um, answer. So I'll give you several text boxes to fill in with these numbers, so 15, 12, 11, and so forth. Then give me this array next, and then give me this array next, including everything, including the uh, white numbers and the blue numbers. All of those will be in the answer. Only kind of color coding these to help you kind of see which parts are part of the heap, which parts are part of the sorted list. But that's um, the idea. So you want to show me this? Yeah, no problem. So that's what you want to, um, so for exam, you want to show me th these um, elements. So of course you would on paper draw this out and you know draw the steps for bubbling down. So of course you'd use a tree to help you show those steps and then just go ahead and write the array at the end. So really not a very hard question on the exam. It should be really easy points or that's kind of my hope, my, I hope for easy points because I really don't really want this to be, shouldn't be anything too bad really, but anyway. So let's continue. So I'll do, I'll keep working until 9.45. So let's see how far I get with this. So, or until I get bored with this. So we'll see what happens first. So I'm going to then call get max again. An element index one is a max element. So 11 is going to be stored to my max variable. Of course, again, delete max is called. So for delete max, all we have to do as always, the very end element, so index eight, so four, so bottom most element over here, is going to overwrite the root. Decrement size by one, which I'll you know, show in the next step. And then bubble down this four. So um, essentially here what's going to happen is, well, the bigger child between these two is going to be 10. And actually three is smaller than four. So of course, naturally it has to bubble down with 10. So then four goes here, 10 goes up. And we continue with this process. So for four, we have two children, five and seven. We bubble down to four with the bigger child. Then we're done. Let's see the question. Uh, no, so for, for, for the exam, you'll have to actually have it color coded. This, this is mostly for you to help you visualize. But on the exam, you just want to just give me the, the full array. After every step, just so on step, you know, one, just give me 12, 10, 11, 5, 7, 3, 2, 4, 1, and then 15. I'll have, I'll have several text boxes. You have to just kind of fill it in with these numbers. So this is kind of for you to help you. You don't have to uh, color code them. I mean, I think for the, uh, it's, it's going to be auto graded. It's going to be kind of fill in the blanks. I don't think you can, you can even color code that. If it was like a uh, free response, you could, but I'm going to make it automated. So it's going to be faster to grade that question on the exam. So, because really I don't have to, you know, I mean, it, it can be automated very easily because there's not much to this really. So. Let's see. 
So use yes. So everything from index one to eight is my heap. Everything after that is my sorted array. But you want to give me the entire this, this entire array after every single step. Let's see here. Okay, yes, I think I answered that question. So you want to give me the, just give me the entire array, basically, after every single step. So, okay. So that's step three. To just copy and paste all this again. Let's just paste all this again, I should say. So size is now going to be uh, seven was eight above, but we did delete max. So then size was decremented by one. And the array looks like this. We're gonna have 10, seven, three, five, four, one, two. And we still have 15 over here and we have 12 over there. So now we're going to store into index position size plus one or index eight, the max from the previous step, which is 11. Put that right there. This would be the answer for step three. So give me this entire array uh, right there. So that would be the answer for step three. And you can see we have a larger sorted sort of array within our, so basically we kind of have this divided. We have our uh, one through seven is part of my heap. Elements eight through 10 is my sorted array. It's all gonna be happening inside this one array, essentially. We just always know the cutoff point size, the index size is really going to be where it's going to part the array into two pieces. So, yeah, I mean, it is a little, a little bit better, uh, I guess, memory wise. You have to create an extra array. So, I guess it, it is better. So, I mean, of course, if you can do it better, why do it worse when you can do it better, I guess. So, yeah, absolutely. So, um, now we're going to have uh, the following, I'll draw the tree for this. So 10, seven, three, five, four, one, and two. You can see this uh, heap is definitely getting smaller and smaller. So now, again, we don't have a sorted array yet. So we're gonna have to, well, do the same process again. So max is going to just be again, uh, get max which will retrieve the value 10 and store it into my max variable because um, the element index one, the root is max element. So very simple to access the max element. And then we can of course call uh, delete max. So we're gonna go ahead as always, take the last element. So index seven, which is that value two, which is right there. We're going to take that value to the very end of our heap, overwrite the root with it, and of course, bubble it down to get our next max for the next you know, step. So again, again, we have two children, seven and three, the bigger child is seven, bubble down with that. So two goes here, seven goes up. Then we're going to bubble down to two. So we have uh, two children, uh, five and four, bubble down with the bigger child. So two goes there, five goes up. That's gonna be my, uh, meet my current sort of uh, heap after I'm done. Let's go ahead and copy down step four. I think I'm aligned somewhat. Yeah, I think numbers, the green numbers are aligning decently. Maybe I'll put a little bit more blue so it's kind of aligned. Um, then we're going to um, go ahead and just paste this, that. And the size now is going to be, I believe, um, six because we decremented it by one because delete max will decrement size by one. And then we're gonna have the following elements in our heap. We're gonna have seven, uh, five, three, two, four, one. And then we, from the previous steps, we had 15, 12, and 11 right here. So now at index size plus one, or six plus one, index seven, we're gonna store the max from our last step. The last step, we got 10 for our max. We're gonna write 10 over there. That's gonna be my current um, sort of um, array. So for step four, for the heap sort question on the exam, write that array down. So there we go. 
So we're not done because we have to do this until the whole list is sorted. So let's go ahead and continue with this. But you can definitely see the very, it's a very tedious uh, algorithm, but I, I guess tedious is not a bad thing. It means it's easy. So if it's tedious, that means it's, it's not very stressful. So it shouldn't be a very difficult question on the exam. So hopefully this is very tedious and it's not too complicated, which it shouldn't be. So now let's go ahead and once again, get our max. We're going to call get max, which is going to store seven my max variable because of course index one or the root has the max value. We store it into a, to a variable. We call delete max, which is going to remove seven, but we already stored it into a variable. So we still preserved the max before deleting. So of course the deleting max is going to take this element one, overwrites the root with this, and we're going to bubble it down. Okay, so we have two children, five and three. The bigger one is five. So bubble down with the bigger child. And then again, we have two children for one, two and four. The bigger child is four, bubble down with that. Now we have our, our max heap order again. Let's go ahead and redraw the, um, redraw the array for step five. Go ahead and paste it right here. Perfect. So I'll, I'll write the array below. So we're going to have five, um, four, three, two, and one. And for our last test, we had 15, I believe, 15, 12, 11, 10. Let me make sure I get this correct. Yes, we had those. Okay, perfect. And then the size, of course, is going to be uh, five now because we, we, we call delete max, which sort of decrements the size by one. So elements one through five is part of my heap. So I'm going to now take the max from the previous step, which was seven, and assign that into position size plus one or index six. I'm gonna put seven right over here. And this is going to be my array. So I'm gonna step five for the exam, write that array down just like that. That would be the answer there. So let's go ahead and continue since we have to do a few more steps. It's a pretty big example, but it's okay. This is kind of covers a large example. So you can, of course, uh, watch this video for exam preparations. So, well, uh, for a final exam, we're not going to have a binary tree, but there will be AVL trees on the final exam. So AVL trees will be on there. That's the only type of binary tree type thing we'll have. It's just AVL trees. So you have to show you know, the rotations and stuff for insertions, you have to do that. So that'll be on the exam. So now we have the following um, tree over here. Let's continue. So I'll do this a little faster now. So we have our max. We get max again, which will get the value five. We'll call a little better. Call it delete max. So go ahead and basically take this value one. So one is being sort of thrown around everywhere so far, but that's okay. That's that happens. So now we're gonna have the one moves up, bubble it down with the larger child. And of course bubble it down with the larger child again. Like that going to be our heap after we're done with this. So I'll go a little bit faster. I want to finish the example up because that way you, you'll have this for notes. So it'll be better for test preparation. So you have the uh, video and notes for this. So I want to try to finish the example up the time I have left over here. I could probably do that. I can probably go fast to do this. Let's, let's speed this up a little bit, but there's not much time left. There's not much elements left in this heap. So it shouldn't take too long at this point. So size will now be five. Five. That's supposed to be four. Sorry, it's four size now. So the array is going to now contain uh, four, um, two, three, one. And in previous steps we had 15, 12, 11, 10, I believe seven. Let me still check this. Yes, it was seven. And then index five, we're going to put in the last max we read, which was five right there. And for step six for the exam, 
give me this array. So now we're going to have four, two, three, and one is in my heap. So elements one through four is my heap. I mean, anything beyond index four is my sorted array. Let's go ahead and now do the same thing once again. Uh, max, let's go ahead and call get max again. Just store the value four into max. And I'll call delete max. So again, one is going to be sort of uh, put to the root. Bubble it down. So we're going to um, down over there like that. And then we're done with that step. So step seven, let's go ahead and redraw the um, array. Yeah, I think we'll get this done in time. No problem. So yeah, easily get this done in time because we have only a few more steps left and I have about 15 minutes. So perfect. This will be definitely done. So feel good about myself. I got this done in time. So definitely, we're definitely on pace to not fall behind in this semester. So all good news. So we're going to have uh, three, uh, two, and one. I believe in our heap we had 15, 12, 11, 10, 7, 5. I believe that was in our, yeah, that was the last step, okay? And then index size, so size now is going to be three at this, at this, uh, at this step. And we're going to insert into index size plus one or index four, the last max we retrieved, which is, which was four, you put the four right there. So we're step seven, I'm going to give me that array. Let's continue. So we have now three, two, and one, my heap. So again, I'm going to get the max as always, which is index uh, one, our root element. Is our max element, which will return three. This will be a constant time to do that. Now do a delete max. And again, as always, one is always going to have to move up to the root. Bubble down the one with the only child, which is going to be two. It's there. Two goes up. Go ahead and redraw the um, array. So I'm going to just uh, paste this here. So size will now be two. And the array contains two, one. And we had, I believe, 15, 12, 11, seven, five, and four. So from the last step, um, we got the value three for our max. We're gonna store this in the position size plus one. So three goes right there. We can see we're getting closer and closer having a sorted um, array. So for step eight, you wanna show me this array on the exam. You wanna put that into those uh, text boxes basically. And then, well, once again, we're not done yet. So we're gonna have two and one like this. So again, we hope we call our get max function. which will retrieve a value two into max, delete max, and again, one is being thrown around, being bullied around here in this tree. So we're going to go ahead, bubble down the one, which is, not do anything really. So that was an easy step. So for step nine, let's draw the array. Um, after we do all that, so I'm going to, um, Let's see here, is this over here? So now we're going to have um, one over here, and we're gonna have 15, 12, 11, 10, seven, five, four, and three, I believe. The last step, actually size now is going to be uh, one. The last step, we got the value two. We're gonna put this into size plus one, just like that. 
So at this step, we actually are sorted. So probably on the exam, I would go ahead and not have you do one more step. I'll do one more step because I guess it would take one more step technically because I guess the, the heap is not empty just yet. But on the exam though, at this point though, I would go ahead and not have you do any more work because well, it's pretty much sorted, but I'll go ahead and not do the final step because it would do one more step if you were to run heap sort. So sure, let's do that one final step. We have our heap right there which contains one, and we're going to basically um, delete this. I'm oh, sorry, max, a little too, head right, too far ahead right there, sorry. So get max, we'll get the value one, and call delete max. The empty, uh, empty heap would happen now, so no bubbling down happens if we're empty now at this point, and then now let's go ahead and redraw our heap. We can um, go ahead and sort of go over to runtime analysis for this. We're done with heap sort. Definitely on pace for this final month of the semester. So I'll have to rush the final, you know, final sort of data structure, I guess, to be graph theory. So definitely good there. Size is now going to be zero. So an empty heap at this point. And our heap contains, our, sorry, the rate in 15. 12, 11, 10, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2. And then what's going to happen is the last example we had one for our max. We're going to override index 0 plus 1 with our max. And now we have our sorted array. So it's all going to, now we have all numbers are all in blue, which means it's sorted. So basically for the exam, um, there wouldn't be a step 10 because well, it's kind of redundant, you know, to have a step 10, you know, for exam purpose, you don't want to waste time with this, but this is going to be how you want to have this sort of, um, known. So for exam, each array would be, so you would just first show me the array after build heap, then show me step one, the array after one step of heap sort, the second step of heap sort, third, you want to show me your steps one by one. Now the tree is mostly there for you to kind of, you know, work out the bubbling down. So you would on paper or on whatever device you're using, you're going to draw this out, but you want to put this array, the exam, uh, sort of those text boxes, if you will. That's heap sort basically. Yeah, so on the exam, same as this, it would be sorting in ascending order. So a max heap would be used, just like that. Okay, so six, seven, and eight. So let's see. So here on step six, we had um, the following. So I can, I can sort of, um, so we had a following scenario. We had the heap had four, two, three, and one. So we get max, which basically, or I mean, sorry, I think let me just, uh, just so you can, Copy it down, I'm guessing, right? That's what you mean, Carl. Is that what you meant? Is just to copy it down? Can, can you actually see this or it is kind of zoomed out? Okay. All right, cool. So, yes, I'll definitely I'll post this um, up on to Canvas as well so you have access to this. So let's go ahead now and just go over the, um, what's it called, the um, runtime analysis for heap sort, and then we can go ahead and call it a day. So definitely got this done in time. So perfect. So we're definitely on pace uh, with this course. So everything's all good to go. So on time analysis of sort. So basically what's going to happen is we first do a build heap, which we know it's going to take O of n time to do. We already proved that it's O of n. Okay. And then plus we're going to run the steps of heap sort. So heap sort basically, so the actual heap sort is going to do, um, it's going to sort of uh, run this um, deletion N number of times. So really to get the max is a constant operation. We go ahead and just sort of, you know, each step of 
deep sort. Well, it's going to be essentially O of 1 to get our max. And then it's going to take O of law again to delete max. Let's here get max. And then delete max will take logarithmic time. And then to, um, it's going to take O of 1 again to assign max into uh, size plus one position. So overall, it's going to be O of law again. And we do this n number of times. So, um, so each step run, or sort of runs n times. So this will take O of n law again. Or we can think of it as we're going to have first log of n plus log of n minus 1 plus log of n minus 2 and so forth, which is going to essentially just be n log n. So build heap O of n plus O of n log n, runtime overall is going to be O of n log n. And you can see here, it doesn't matter if let's say if I would have not have done build heap, let's say if I would have done the um, the um, other method of building our heap where we just create another array and one by one we just insert like that, it would be n log n time to build our heap plus n log n to do heap store. Either way, it's n log n because heap store takes n log n regardless. So it wouldn't matter. But of course, you know, it's still better to save time, even if you can a little bit. So I guess why not? So build heap is going to be a little bit faster. So the overall runtime will be a little better if we use build heap first instead of doing that n log n approach to construct your heap. So no matter what, though, it's n log n because we have to do this step for heap store. Each step takes log n times. We're doing n number of deletions. Each deletion is logarithmic. N of them, it will average out to be n log n. So heap stores n log n time algorithm. It's always n log n. There is no best, no worst case, no average. It's always n log n every single time, no matter what. There's for the best, worst, average, always n log n. So it's there's no case where it can be better than n log n. So remember if like, you know, insertion sort can be O of n in a very good case scenario. Heap store, well, there is it's just n log n always. So that's our priority queue um sort of or bill or heap. Uh, lesson. So I'll have, um, yeah, I guess it's data log in in the words best and average. So, so once again, data does not really mean average. Data is, is a very tight analysis. So it's data and log in in the best case, data and log in the worst case, and data and log in the average case. It's kind of confusing with the whole o big O and big data. So that's why it's big O because it's kind of encapsulates every scenario, but it's data and log in for the best, worst, and average because it's it can't be improved it's just how it, it is what it is really so so i will have an assignment maybe this weekend or so which is going to be um an assignment that will have you construct a min or max heap extra credit or doing it faster than open law again yeah sure So anyway, um, so there's going to be an assignment that will cover min or max heaps next week. Shouldn't be anything too bad. So you have to construct your own heap um, class. And then using a heap, you have to solve some problem with it. And for the next few weeks, we're going to cover graph our, our last data structure in this class. So I have several weeks to cover that. So I'll have to hurry through graph theory because it can be a little bit challenging to be first expose the graph theory. So, from this point on next week on, we're going to start going over graph theory. So that's it for today. So take care, you guys. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have an awesome weekend. And I'll see you guys next week.